planning a trip to Hawaii does not have to be complicated. In today's video, I'm gonna show you a sample itinerary that you can use for a week in Hawaii. Let's get into it. So for this itinerary, this is one of many itineraries that I've created here on the itinerary idea playlist. I will leave a link in the description box below. So for this itinerary, let's say that you're a group of friends, two to four of you or two couples, and you're looking to do something here on Oahu. You're looking for a mix of sightseeing, a little bit of culture, some nature, and some free time as well. So let's get into it. In a seven day itinerary, day one. For the first day, I would highly recommend if that's your arrival day and you're arriving in the morning or late afternoon, have this as your free day. This would be a great day to hang out on the beach, grab a bite to eat, maybe check out some restaurants, walk around the Waikiki area. If you're tired and you don't want to walk around Waikiki, another great option is the Waikiki Pink Line Trolley. It's $5 and it takes you around Waikiki. The whole route is about one hour and it ends at the Alamana Shopping Center. The ride typically will go every 15 minutes and you can check their schedule in the link in the description box below. Day two. Let's say you wanted to get a little bit of sightseeing in and you also want to see a little bit of nature. One of my favorite island tours, I'll leave a link in the description box below instead of having a lot of spots around the island it only goes to six spots around the island one of which is Waimea Valley Botanical Garden admissions included which is $25 it also includes lunch at the North Shore at the shrimp trucks and it does a few other highlights along the way this tour focuses more on quality of stops so fewer stops but more time at the stops as opposed to quantity of stops now if you are looking to do more of a quantity type of tour I'll leave a link in the description box below but if you're interested in say nature you want to check out a nice easygoing simple nature walk or hike, Waimea Valley might be a great option for you. This island tour hits the highlights, the Dole Pineapple Plantation, Bioto Inn Temple, Waimea Valley, and a few other stops along the island, taking the east coast, cutting through the center, east coast, up to the north shore, and down the center of the island with Dole Pineapple Plantation as the last stop. It is a full day. It runs eight to five, but it's a great option, especially if you're traveling in a group, you haven't been to Hawaii before, and you'd like a local to show you around the island. Not only are you looking at these specific places here on the island, you're not dealing with traffic, you're not dealing with a car rental, you have a local who's telling you the history of the specific spots you're going to and it makes it easy for a full day. So let's see the next day. So the next day, one really good idea for an itinerary would be some sort of evening event. I would highly recommend either a luau or a dinner cruise. Luau is a great option in the evening because it gives you the first part of your day free to check out the beach, relax, whatever you'd like to do. And then the afternoon, you can go to a luau. I'll leave a link in the description box below for some of my favorites, a small group luau, as well as a larger group luau. Luau's will vary on price points depending on the size of the luau. So some luau's that only hold 50 to 70 people will typically have one general admission price point. Whereas another luau that holds two to 600 people will typically have two or three packages with farther back seating that will be cheaper than seating up front with more amenities. The next thing I would say would you could do if you've already done a luau or you want to substitute a luau for something else, you could also opt to do a dinner cruise. So some dinner cruises will also have Polynesian entertainment on board. Dinner cruises are shorter, only two hours long. Instead of trying the local food, it's typically more of an American style menu. So you could choose from a buffet, steak, crab, and chicken. You could choose steak and lobster. The cruise typically is two hours long and there's usually a show on board that lasts about 20 minutes. So if you're short on time or you like a more compressed itinerary, that's a great option as well for an evening event. So, so far we have day one is arrival free day. Day two, we've got an island tour. Day three, we've got the first part of the day free and an evening event. For day four, I would suggest perhaps something on the water to get you in the water. So ideas for this, you could snorkel off of the coast of Waikiki. Some popular places, depending on season, would be Hanama Bay or Shark's Cove. If you wanted to go on a boat, you could also do snorkeling at Turtle Canyon, a great option to take you on the water for two to three hours, depending on the boat. There's some no frills options. There's some like luxury options if you want to have drinks as well as appetizers or a full lunch on board. They all do go to the same spot, which is Turtle Canyon. That'd be a good fourth day activity. These activities are gonna be short, just two to three hours so you have the rest of your day free. Let's see here. Next would be day five. Day five would be a good exploratory day to go to downtown Honolulu. You can do this a few different ways. You can go by city bus. You can go by Uber or Lyft to check out the Iolani Palace State Capitol Building. There is the Red Line Trolley, which runs out 30 or so dollars, a hop on hop off style trolley. Or if you wanted to just see a little bit of downtown Honolulu, there's also Pearl Harbor tours that include a quick drive through of downtown Honolulu. And I would definitely recommend doing that at least for a full day. You can see as much or as little as you'd like. Pearl Harbor is a historic site and there are four different attractions you can visit. There's the USS Arizona Memorial, which is what most people go to see when they see Pearl Harbor or when they refer to Pearl Harbor. There's the USS Missouri Battleship. There's the Aviation Museum with two hangars of airplanes and warbirds. It is crazy windy out here, guys, <laughs> but we're going to keep going. <laughs> and then the last part is going to be the submarine. So you 
can get and see as much or as little as you like. If you're short on time, I would definitely recommend at least the visitor center. If you wanted to see the main attractions, my two favorites that I would say I would recommend the most would be the Arizona Memorial and the Battleship Missouri. So the Arizona would signify the beginning of World War II for us, and then the Battleship Missouri is where they signed the Surrender Treaty ending World War II. So, so far again, we've got the first day of arrival, beach day, second day, an island tour, the third day, free day in the morning, evening event, I would say perhaps a luau or a dinner cruise. The next day, some sort of snorkel tour, and then we're on day five already. And day five, you could easily do a Pearl Harbor trip, or if you have visited Pearl Harbor in the past, you could do a trip into downtown Honolulu. We have two days left, day six and day seven. I usually don't recommend to do anything on day seven, which is your departure date, just so that way you are ready to go, you can pack, you don't have to rush. A good option for day six, I would say, is to explore Waikiki. Waikiki is a very small area, but it's all very walkable. You could easily spend the day at Waikiki Beach. You could head over to the hills of Hawaiian Village, which is where we're filming right now. There's a saltwater lagoon where you can rent stand-up paddle boards or smaller kayaks. It's a great area for kids, the Hilton Hawaiian Village Lagoon, but that could be a nice, easy, relaxed day to spend your time here in Waikiki. So we've got our full seven days planned out. So one more time, recap. First day is arrival, nice beach day. Second day is some sort of island tour. The one that I recommended includes a stop at a waterfall. The third day would be the luau, evening event or dinner cruise. The fourth day would be something in the water, snorkeling, whether that's at Hanama Bay, Sharks Cove, or Turtle Canyon. The fifth day would be a trip into downtown Honolulu or Pearl Harbor, or you could combine those two together, visiting Pearl Harbor as well as a downtown city tour. And then day six would be a great day to explore the Waikiki area. Day seven would be your departure date where you'd have all of your flights ready to go. And don't forget to make sure to check into your flight and print out your boarding passes if you need them. So that is a great example of a week here in Hawaii and I hope that helped you guys. You can of course copy this entire itinerary. I'll leave a link in the description box below or you can pick and choose specific things that maybe struck your interest. I've also got a full playlist of tours and activities on all the tours and activities that I mentioned here in the video that I've done myself so you can take a look and see if it's right for you. And of course I will not forget if you would like to plan your own Hawaii vacation I've included a free printable of a Hawaii vacation planner that you can use to plan your Hawaii vacation or if you'd like some guidance we also do custom itineraries specifically for families and groups. If this sounds like something that you might want to do, I will leave a link in the description box below for you to schedule a call on Zoom for your Hawaii vacation. Thanks so much. On to the next one, guys. On this one-page planner, you have everything that you need where you can jot down your details for your hotel, rental car, tours and activities, things that you want to do, and a general itinerary. In this video, I'm gonna go over. Let's say you're here for a week in Hawaii. It, wow, it is so freaking windy. Can we pause it? I just wanna see what this looks like with my hair getting crazy. This wind. I'm just kidding. No.